What is up guys and today we're gonna start a new C++ tutorial series. This one is kind of making up for my last one which is horrible. The video and audio were out of sync. It was just a mess but it still got so many likes and so many views that I just feel like I've got to do another series. The first two videos both had over 1,000 views and it'd be cool if we could get that happening all over again. So we're gonna learn how to make a game with C++. I am no pro. I'm an amateur, but I'm going to show you a few of the things I have learned to do with C++. And let's see, I have a few screenshots I've taken from the code so that I can refer to them. And that's the wrong image. But anyway, so I can just remember what the code was if I forget. Alright, so let's go ahead and create a new project. Now, it's going to be a text game. It's going to be a text game. No characters moving around like in the last series. We actually had like an overhead view of a, some a symbol walking around. This is just going to be a text game, but let's go ahead and get into this. So we're going to put Win32 console application, and we're just going to name it Run for President, and it's going to be about running for president and seeing if you can become the president of the United States. This is the wake after the wake of the big crazy election we just had last year. So a lot of people went haywire over that. I'm just not going to say anything about it because I don't want to get 500 dislikes. So let's go ahead and get started coding. I'm not going to give any more introduction. Let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to include a few libraries so we can use the code from those libraries. I'm not going to give a whole lot of explanation for a lot of the things I do, but hopefully you know enough basic C++ to know what I'm doing right now. And sorry if I have to keep looking down and tapping my phone to keep it from shutting down. Is there any way to keep it from... Let me see if there's any way to keep it shining I mean lighting I mean I mean turn on okay so we're gonna have to include this we're gonna be working with a lot of streams strings so we're gonna include string and let's see I include CSTD lib I don't remember what I included that for but I have that in this screenshot and we're also going to include we're gonna be using this in the future we're gonna include C time Okay, so those are just different libraries we're going to be using to refer to the code from those libraries. And, of course, some people like to do this, some people don't. I do like to do this, so using namespace std. So that way you don't have to put um, std before any function in the, in the standard namespace library, whatever. In standard namespace. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to create a few variables. We're going to create one called last name string last name that is going to be the last name of you as the player I T money that's how much money you're going to have I T opponent money that's how much your opponent can um presidential candidate has I T um opponent fans this is how many fans or followers your opponent has and I T fans that's your fans or followers and I'm not going to create this variable right now. I'm just going to refer to it later. All right, so string, we're going to have a name for your opponent. Opponent name. This is going to be the name of your opponent. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an array of random first names so that we can randomly generate a name for your opponent. So we're just going to create a, an array of a bunch of different names. So let's see. We're going to put this string opponent. It's too many Ps opponent first name and I'm just gonna put nine in the bracket for right now and equals press enter add a bracket press enter again actually let me see I'm just gonna do space alright so let's just do some random names let's do Arthur your presidential opponent's name might be Arthur alright add some spaces it might be Dan no not Daniel it's Daniel I've never heard of anybody named Daniel not yet it might be Lucy if it's a female. Oh, Visual Studio, don't you understand my spacing? Okay, it might be Matthew. His name might be Matthew. His name could be... Oh, I'm messing up. See, I mean, Visual Studio is totally bewildered at my spacing. It has no idea what I'm doing. Karen, what if the name is Karen? I have a sister named Karen. It'd be cool if she became president. Daniel, wait. Okay, in my code, I actually have the name Daniel twice. 
I would you would only do that if you wanted it there to be more of a chance of Daniel being actually named. So I have to create another name. How about Bob? Because I mean, wait, I already have Bob in my code. I love the name Bob. How about Gilligan? I like the name Gilligan too. Comment below and let me know what you think of the name Gilligan. All right, George. There already was a president named George, but I don't think there's any problem with someone else us having another president named George. Okay. Barack, almost like Barack Obama, but it's spelled differently. So if you don't get if you don't like Obama, don't get mad at me. Okay. Oh, whoa, I messed that up. That's not how Bob is spelled. Okay. And then at the end of the array, you're going to put a semicolon. All right, so just one second. All right, so there should be a total of nine names. If you want to add more names, just change this array number to the number of names. If you want 12 names, then put 12 in there. But right now, we're just going to have nine names. You can always add more whenever you want to. All right, so let's add another array, string opponent, last name. We're going to add an array of last names so it can randomly generate a last name. All right, so brackets. Wait, no, no enter. All right, here we go. Okay. M. Brooks, my sister's laughing at me. Everybody say hi to my sister. She won't hear you. Alright, so M. Brooks. And what I do for the last name, sometimes I put like, some presidents will have like a middle initial. So sometimes I put actually a middle initial as part of the last name and it will just add that. And so that it doesn't, if we were to do this right now, it would act, actually like, suppose it randomly picked Arthur and M. Brooks. It would actually have Arthur, and right after the letter R would be M. So to fix that, we're just going to add a space at the end of all of these first names. So that there's a space between the first and the last name, if that makes any sense. I'm just not the best at explaining things. All right, so there's no needed need for a space before the first letter of the last name. All right, so enter. Visual Studio still hasn't figured out my spacing. W. Mart. Not Marin. Martin. All right, one, two, this is probably bad spacing, but Goebbels, I have this in my code. I don't think that's a very, I don't know if it's a last name or not. All right, I'm just going to keep typing in names and blabbing about random things, so just follow along with me. You can add your own names or whatever. So, this is really weird. Maybe you're like me and you want to, sometimes you want to just go to Google and Google your name and see what comes up. So I Googled Joseph Levesque, which is my real name. And by the way, Joseph Farrow 99 has recently started showing up in YouTube churches. I mean, searches, not churches. I didn't know YouTube has churches. But anyway, I searched my name on Google, Joseph Levesque. And one of the top suggestions for my name was Joseph Levesque Obituaries. And that was definitely very flattering that people are searching my name along with the word obituaries quite a bit. All right, so we'll just add a... Wait, backspace. All right, so I did semicolon. Let me make sure this is nine. Yeah, that's nine. Na last names. All right, so let's go ahead and we want to add states that our person can be from. So let's add string states. Basically, what we're doing is just setting up our basic game. In the next tutorial, we'll actually be creating an event loop with random events that you can use to build your following and so on. Okay. So let's see. We got, all right, so we got New York. Isn't that where Donald Trump is from? I don't know. I think it's where Hillary Clinton is from. All right, so enter. We got Alabama with the banjo on money. We got Louisiana. We got Alaska. I don't think we've ever had a president from Alaska, but then again, kind of, Rare to get a president from Hawaii, which was our last president. Alaska, let's see, we got Wyoming, the least populated state in the United States, but that does not mean it is, what am I doing? It does not mean it is the worst. It's a very awesome state, very beautiful. All right. Arkansas. And Kansas. So I'm just adding a few, man. I'm not adding a whole lot right now, but I'm just adding enough for now. You can add more to the list easily. Again, if you want to add, like, all 50 states, just put 50 in that array. 
All right. So this is basically just the setup. Now we can actually get to the INT main part. So let's go ahead and start off with a simple message to the user. So we're going to type C out, two arrows tor pointing towards C out. And our message is going to be welcome to run for president. What is your last name? And we're going to add a space to make it look like the user is actually supposed to type there. And then press enter and cn. This allows the user to input a name. And then we're going to input this into the variable that we previously created called last name. Okay. It's adding an error there like something's wrong. Did I do something wrong? Did I do something wrong? I don't see anything wrong, so I'm just going to keep, type, keep typing. Typing! Keep typing? Isn't Tyke the name of a toy company? I'm just going to keep typing, man. Alright, so we're glad you're running for president. Mr. No, do not black out phone. Mr. And then add a space so there will be space between the word Mr. and add two arrows pointing between Mr. and your last name. Add two arrows pointing towards the out and add last name. Wait. And then two more arrows. So it's going to put, we're glad you're running for president, Mr. Then it's going to add last name and then we're going to add another symbol which is going to be an exclamation point and then we're just going to add two more symbols pointing that way ENZL which is going to move the cursor or the next message to the next line I'm explaining this horribly but you'll see how you'll see how this is going to work in just a little bit I see what's wrong with this we put the wrong name for the, I put the wrong name for the rival that's what the rival is actually named it's got to have a capital N okay all right so let's go ahead and generate a random Username. All right. Actually, up here, I didn't think I needed to do this, but I do. We're gonna create a variable call. I mean, actually, we're gonna put s rand. Just add this line right here and explain what it means in just one second. S rand time o just like this. S rand time o time o. So this is basically just gonna make sure that every time you play the game, it's gonna be basically to put it very simply, it's gonna generate a different random name every time. If we didn't do this, it would have the same list of random numbers every time you played it I think so horrible explanation but let's keep going all right so opponent name equals we're gonna set what the opponent name equals what does it equal it equals opponent first name and we're gonna add oh boy can I explain this I don't know if I can explain this so rand modulus 9 and boy, can I explain this. So what this basically is going to do, it's going to assign the opponent name to equal a rand. This rand one right here is going to generate a random number. It's going to divide it by 9, and that's going to leave a remainder from 0 to 8. So basically, if the it's going to this is going to leave an integer in this bracket right here from 0 to 8. So if it equals 0, this is going to pick, for example, Arthur. If it ends up equaling, if the remainder after dividing the random number by 9 is 1, then it's going to equal Daniel. If it's 2, it's going to equal Lucy. So it's going to generate a random number in this bracket, and it's going to take the, the name in that particular index in this array of last names. I'm sorry if you don't understand what that means. It's just hard to explain. And if you have any questions, you don't, if you don't understand, just let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to give a better explanation. So now... We're going to add opponent name, because opponent name only equals the first name right now, so we have to add the last name. So opponent name, type in dot append, and this is going to, we're going to add, appending is going to actually add another string to opponent name. And what we're going to add to it is opponent last name. And we're going to have the same deal here, rand modulus 9, and then this right here. So we're basically going to, again, generate a random number from 0 to 1. It's going to take the last name at the index in the array opponent last name, and it's going to append that name to the first name that we added to opponent name. All right. So let me make sure I typed that in right. Yeah, I did. All right, so let's go ahead and type in C out, and we're going to add another message. And I'm just going to go ahead and add backslash in. That's going to add a blank line right in front of this. All right, so let's go ahead and begin, no, begin your 
You, not you campaign. Your campaign. You're up against Shirley Temple. I'm just kidding. Shirley Temple. I don't even know how long she's been dead. I just know she's very popular. And so we're just going to add a space. That's going to add a space between this text and the opponent name. Add two arrows pointing this way. And then add opponent name. Two more arrows. And ENDL is going to add a... It's going to move the cursor to the next line. So it's basically just going to print the opponent's name right after this text. All right, so see out opponent name. This is going to print the name of your opponent. And then what we're going to print after that, we're going to add two more arrows pointing this way. Quotation marks, a space is from. And we're going to add two more arrows pointing that way and a space at the end of this. And we're going to output the text that has the state he's from. So we're going to actually pick a random state. Rand. We're going to add to parenthesis modulus 11. So again, same deal here. We have 11 states, so we're just going to divide the random number by 11. It's going to give us a number from 0 to 10. And it's going to pick the state name at that particular index at the time. Oops, and I just noticed arrow here. This is supposed to be an equal sign, not a semicolon. All right. So, state, hey, and then two more arrows, E and D L. Oh yeah. Up here it's called state, so I have to add an S to the end of that. Okay, well, I think we're. Let's let's see what we got here. All right. So we're gonna say how much money your opponent has. So opponent opponent money. Let me see how long this recording has been going. Wow, this has actually been going quite a while. I didn't think it was going to take this long. I'm sorry if this is getting boring, but opponent money is going to equal rand modulus 32767. And this is actually the maximum. I'm trying to remember. This is the maximum number that rand can be. That rand can equal, I think. I actually don't remember. Maybe I'll put like an annotation explaining. But just put that line right there and then rand modulus 100. Alright, so let me see if I can remember what this even means. Opponent money is going to equal... Um, oh my goodness. Okay, so this is going to generate the rand modulus. This is going to divide the random number by 32,767. So this is going to give us an amount of money, I believe... From 0 to 30, 32,766. And then we're going to multiply that by a random number between 0 and 1, I mean, and 99, I think. So this could result in some problems. It could generate really low numbers and actually result in the opponent having little or no money, I think. So the way we need to fix this problem is adding an if statement. And if money, not me only, if money is less. Oh, my brain is frizzled. I feel like my brain's falling apart. I hope you guys can follow along. Ew, I just spit on my screen. Gross. Okay, but I hope you guys can follow along because my brain is falling apart. So if the, if the opponent has less than $250,000, because presidential campaigns take a lot. So if he has less than a quarter of a million dollars, what we're going to do is we're going to put opponent money plus equals it's going to equal itself plus we're actually going to add 500,000 to it so that his money supply is not too low so we're going to do kind of the same thing let's just copy this oh let me see let me do that again copy that we're going to actually print this three copy we're going to paste that three times so opponent fans is what this one's going to be this is going to be just money. That's going to be your money. And this is going to be your fans. So let's go ahead and just finish this up real quick. So. All right. You see, man, modulus 3, 2,607. And we're just going to put 15. So we'll only multiply it max by the random number max by 14. So it doesn't result in millions of fans necessarily. So if the fans is less than 5,000, because 5,000 is not a lot of fans. And let me put opponent fans. And this needs to be opponent 
money. So if opponent fans is less than 5,000, opponent fans is going to plus eco, we're going to add 5,000 to it. So we'll have over 5,000 fans at least. So let's see what we got here. So if money equals ran, modulus, uh, same thing, same deal. We already went over that. I'm just not going to explain anymore because we're kind of running low on time. So if money is less than 250,000, money is going to plus equal 500,000. Let me just copy this right here and just paste it over this. So fans, same deal, same code. If fans is... No, stop. Stop. If fans is less than 5,000, we're going to add 5,000 fans to the list. Okay, let me see how time is going to. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. It's almost half an hour. So what we're going to do, we're just going to add a symbol C out message. I'm going to add backslash in. And we're just going to put a message showing your opponent's money and fans and your money and fans. So opponent campaign fund. And we're just going to add this and add a whole bunch of spaces. So we're going to add a dollar sign. No, no space needed. So we're going to add two more arrow symbols pointing that way. And we're just going to, after that text, we're going to print the opponent money. And then we're going to move the cursor to the next line. So what we print next is going to be on the next line. So actually, let me just copy this right here. And paste that. Press two enters. Paste that again. All right, so opponent fans there's no need for a new line because this, this is going to be printed on the next line already so let's just line this up um let's see opponent fans and so we're just going to print the text opponent fans a bunch of spaces and then we're going to print the number of fans he has after that so now we're going to put over here we're going to print out your campaign fund Let's line this up with the dollar sign up there, and we're going to print out the integer money. So we're, next, we're going to print out your fans. So just line this up, and we're just going to print out fans. All right, so let's add the last few lines of code. We're going to add backslash n to move the cursor to the next line. We're just going to add a blank line between this and what we're printing right here. So we're going to put press, type press D at any time during the game to review your money and fans. All right. Semicolon. C out. Not C out. That looks like a French word. All right. So we're going to add another message backslash in to make sure this is on a separate line. Throughout the game, you will get... Different opportunities if I learn how to type. I know that's wrong. How is it wrong? Okay. My brain is just frizzled, so I can barely think right now. To expand your following and funds. Period. And space. Take the best option or else you die. Uh... Um, never mind, not that line. So yeah, my brain is just really frizzled. I can barely think right now, and that is not the best state of mind to be in while you're trying to teach somebody a C++ tutorial. So I think I'm done. So let me give this a whirl. Debug, start without debugging. Yes, we're going to build it. Please let there be no errors. Please let there be no errors. Please, no bugs, no bugs, no bugs. I hate bugs. I don't like bugs. Please. Is, are there going to be no bugs? <gasps> Welcome to Run for President. What is your last name? Oh, I don't know. Ice cream. We're glad you're running for president, Mr. Ice Cream. Let's go ahead and begin your campaign. You're up against Bob Goebbels. Bob Goebbels is from Alabama. Opponent campaign fund. He has $914,892, and he has 12,726 fans. The, li the spacing is not, the it's not lining up properly, but we'll fix that. And I only have $404,736 and 87,192 fans. So I have more fans than him, but less money. And then press D at any time during the game to reveal your money and fans. Throughout the game, you will get many different opportunities to expand your following and funds. Take the best option. Alright guys, so that's going to be it for now. 
If you have any problems or issues or I was rushing through something too fast and couldn't explain it properly, just comment below. I'll try to get back with you as soon as I can, hopefully. And thank you for watching this video. I'll have more tutorials coming up soon, hopefully again. And just check out my other series too if you want to learn some more about C++ tutorials. So thank you for watching this video. I will see you around.